Well, good morning and welcome back to GP Outdoors. A lot of you have been asking, why is the boat still sitting on the trailer in the middle of June? Today I'm going to answer that question for you. I hope you'll stick around. Cheers. Today's video is another installment in a playlist I have on my channel called Buying a New Cottage. I'll put a link to it at the end of this video in case you're interested. <laughs> oh boy. This old girl has served us well for a long time. One of the biggest jokes in the family over the last few years is that we're going to head up to the cottage one day and this dock and my boat are going to be floated over on the other side of the bay. She's definitely served us. It was time to start looking for a new dock. We realized that a few years back, so my wife and I started saving money and I started looking into different dock companies and dock builds, pricing, estimates. I finally found a company that I was happy with and I'm going to show you that dock install today and I'm going to tell you some of the information and things that you might want to consider if you're looking at putting a dock on your waterfront property. Over the last two and a half years, I have visited numerous dock companies as far away as about two and a half hours from my cottage, because as you know, there isn't a dock company on every corner. So all I did basically is every once in a while throughout the summers, I'd go on the internet, I'd find the next dock company, and I'd just plan a different route up here to make sure I could get out, meet the folks there, take a look at the quality of the build, what type of materials they were using, get some pricing, and any other related information. The first thing I found out very quickly, there is no such thing as a cheap dock. If you're new to the channel, I just wanted you to know this is not a sponsored video and I received no compensation for doing it. My words, my opinions, my channel. Docks are a very expensive asset that you put on your property. So I think it's really important that you make sure you're happy with the quality, the type of build, the materials used and of course the service from the company that you're about to spend a very large sum of money with. I was also really happy that I didn't wait till the last minute and I took the time to do my research and my diligence. There are numerous different options for putting a dock in on your waterfront property. Different types of building materials, different build styles or engineering designs. There are fixed docks, there are floating docks, there are docks that are on piers driven down into the bottom of the, the seabed. There are a number of different designs, shapes. You could pretty much get anything you want, but none of them are cheap. There are cheaper docks, but at the end of the day, it's a very big investment in what's probably the asset or the second biggest investment you and your family have ever made, your cottage. Let me take a quick minute to give you a perspective that you may not have thought of before you decide which dock to buy. Where you live at your primary residence, whether you're down in the city or in a town, no matter how big your house is, I'm pretty sure there's going to be one room in that house where the whole family congregates or gets together every single day of the year. You may have numerous rooms in the house, whether it's the kitchen, a living room, a family room, your rec room, but at the end of the day, everybody always ends up in one room to spend time together. And for our benefit, let's call it the family room. It's also more than likely the room where you entertain guests when you have friends over or neighbors over. It's probably your most used room. Well, up here at the cottage, this is your family room. When you're up at the cottage, everybody's hanging out on the dock. They're not hanging around inside. And as you know, you've got your family members, you have neighboring folks from the cottages down the lake, you've got friends you're bringing up from the city. And at the end of the day, given that this is the family room, you wanna make sure you take time to decide what you need and balance that with what your budget is. This dock, for example, we've had it for a long time, but as you can see, I've got five members of the family. My cousins or friends come up, and even with the five of us, it's not wide enough or large enough for us all to sit comfortably together. I end up having to layer these Muskoka chairs back. So Carol and I decided that when we did replace this dock, we were gonna put some thought into it and some money. And I'm really happy we did, and I'm really happy with the company we chose. Along my travels doing all that research, I also found out a really critical piece of information. Probably like yourself, I thought I was able to just drop a dock in the water or build a dock anytime I wanted to. Not true here in Ontario. You may have permit requirements, not only at a municipal government level, but you may also need a provincial permit to put a dock in front of your cottage. True. And these processes or applications for permits are not tied together at all. They're two separate, mutually exclusive application processes that you need to go through depending on the type of dock you want to build, depending on how big it is and where you want to put it on your property and how you want to fix it, either to the lake bottom or to the shore of your property. 
I was really happy I found out that information because it helped me shape the determination of what style or type of dock build I wanted here. So armed with a few things that we considered, my wife and I decided we wanted a dock that was big enough that we could have our family sitting comfortably and perhaps some friends. I wanted a good solid build, something that was really quality and had either no or very little maintenance over the years coming. I'm 57 now. The last thing I wanna do is buy a product or have something that I purchase, especially for such a large sum of money that I now have to continue to do maintenance on over two or three or four years. I wanted to make sure that it was put in once, had a good warranty on it, was built by a good company with a good reputation. So I looked at numerous companies. I saw different types of builds, whether they were steel, galvanized, aluminum, different types of wood, whether it was cedar, pressure treated, PVC, different talk, dock styles, different types of flotations. We went through a lot of things and armed with the information that I learned through the permit processes to figure out what I could build that was not gonna get me caught up in a very long bureaucratic process, I came to the decision on the dock. Today you're gonna to meet with Ben from Interco Fabrications. They're a Canadian company. They build them right here in Ontario. His team's coming up to put the new dock in and we're gonna spend a few minutes with them. Ben, how are you going? Doing great. Family was super excited. We've been looking forward to it. Almost counting the days off the calendar. <laughs> Your guys are out of, they're incredible. They pulled Thanks. up and before I knew it, I could hear them pulling boards off the old dock. There was no weight, yeah. zero weight state. Yeah. So you're with Interco Fabrication, Yeah. Um, which is the company that I finally chose after going through a number of different competitors or different companies in the, this general area. And I wanted to talk to you a little bit and thank you for sitting down with me. Maybe a little bit about the company first, that would be great. For sure. Yeah, so Interco Fabrication started back in the 70s, early 70s as a truck repair shop. Uh, and then we molded into fabricating of trailers, docks, uh, custom fabrications. Um, so yeah, we're in the Korthas, so we have hundreds of lakes around us. So it was a <laughs> yeah. perfect opportunity that we saw for uh, getting into the dock business. One of my father's friends in Manitoba actually came down. He built docks in Manitoba and came down for two weeks, showed us how to make jigs and get set up. Okay. Probably about 30 to 35 years ago, uh, and then yeah, ever since it's it's just been busy. <laughs> yeah, well, I've, I've got to tell you, I've I've done a lot of work over the last two and a half, three years. I've looked at a lot of different dock companies, a lot of different builds, and once I came across uh, your company and the product, and I started to look at the way and uh, you build the docks and how well built they are, I said to Carol, "This is the dock for us." Yeah, perfect. And yeah. Uh, I'm really pleased because uh, your folks, your team. They're excellent to deal with on the phone. That's the great. process was very clear, and I wanted to talk about that before we finish up today as well, just for anybody that is looking. Because yeah. like you said, right now, there's a huge explosion in cottage country of people yes. buying properties and cottages. Yeah. And of course, if you're on the water, you're gonna want to dock. You need to dock, that's yeah. 100%. <laughs> Indeed. So I was hoping uh, we could talk a little bit about the different types of docks that you build for sure. and the different types of materials you use because yep. there's such a, a big variety out there to choose from across the different companies. For sure. Yeah, so our standard docks uh, would be then a uh, floating dock, which you're uh, bought and getting installed today. Yeah. Uh, so that's with floating billets underneath it. There's also what we consider as a pipe dock or a pole dock, which is actually uh, stabilized by legs legs that just sit on the bottom of the, the lake? Yes, Or exactly. are they affixed to the bottom? No, so these are, the pipe dock is just sitting on the bottom of the lake. They are recommended to be removed every year before winter hits and the lake okay. freezes, right? Yeah. So lightweight because of aluminum, uh, but still right. strong, engineered stamped on all our frames and everything. So Excellent. they're built extremely strong. We have four different styles of frames in aluminum too on okay. everyone's what their application is, what the design they like. So over the years, we've learned to listen to the customer. And if the, we started with a truss style and then we've turned into a medium duty style, heavy duty, light duty, right. as to what the customer wants. And if we have one customer who wants it, there's, there'll be more out there that will want it. No, right? for sure. So, and you touched on one of the questions I had for you. Uh, as I went through the different builds and I've got some folks on the lake that also have aluminum docks. And I know that you have, I believe, a light duty, a medium duty, and a heavy duty dock. And a truss. And a truss. Four, yeah, four wow. styles. Yeah. And so this is a medium duty, yes. is that correct? Yeah. And what would, if I was looking for a dock like I was, 
how would you assess whether uh, someone needs a light duty versus a medium duty versus a heavy duty? Yeah. So light duty is a two by four aluminum tube frame, which okay. is only designed for pond settings, uh, lagoon areas, walkways through like uh, wetlands, um, nothing really tied up to it. Okay. It's a very, very light frame. So literally it can be moved by a boat okay. if the wind gets too, too much, okay. right? So it's not recommended to have uh, watercrafts or anything really tied to it because it's okay. uh, so lightweight. But in cer certain applications, it works perfect. Yeah, okay. Then the medium duty is now by far a bestseller. It has the cleanest look. It is the strongest uh, frame for its design to okay. any competitor out there. So uh, everyone seems to gravitate to the medium duty. Okay. So then that's where we brought out our heavy duty, which is a two by eight frame. So okay. you have light duty two by four, medium duty two by six, yep. and then heavy duty is two by eight. Heavy duty would be considered a commercial use. So oh, okay. it's not used much in residential, You're, it's overkill. But at marinas and is marinas, that of... uh, big lakes, okay. Simcoe, Lake Ontario, stuff like that, yeah. uh, that would be used there. Um, same with the truss. Trusses are original style that we've had for over 30 years. Okay. That's what we designed with and then snowballed from there. But truss is really, really strong too, but it's a deep frame and it's an open web style. So some people don't like that industrial okay. look. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense because one of uh, one of my friends has, I believe, a light duty dock. Okay, yep. And I noticed uh, when I was talking with your folks trying to finalize the design and the type, the one reference I had is when we pull up and a few of us get on his dock and we start walking across his dock, yeah. you, you almost feel it start to flex. To flex. Yeah. And that's why I had mentioned to them I, I definitely need at least that medium duty. Yeah. Because it's a nice, strong build. And speaking of that, one of the other things that impressed me is your frames are welded, aren't they? They're yes. not bolted. No, they're all welded structures. So yeah, we, we do wide loads down the road to get them down uh, to your location or boat launches. Right. But yeah, like we, everything is welded structure. So that gives it the strength and the durability and the duration. Like it, it, you'll last for over 40 years that frame. Well, I hope so because I, I don't plan, <laughs> don't plan <laughs> exactly. to buy another one. I'm not sure if I'm going to make it 40. Yeah. But you know, the kids, of course, I, exactly. I wanted to make sure I had something that was good quality mm -hmm. that, you know, when that time comes, if the kids are now here and I'm not, yeah. Yeah, you, that they're not into a very large expense to fix something and I want it to last uh, a good long time and I want it to look clean let's be yes, honest it, yeah. it's it's a sharp looking dock yeah speaking of that uh, I had three choices there was pressure treated wood yep. uh, cedar yep. and this is PVC. PVC decking yes right and I chose the PVC because you know I'm getting lazy as I get older and I just don't want maintenance yeah I don't no, want to have smart. to fix or sand or restain or do anything in the future I want to be yeah. able to set it use it enjoy it yeah uh leave it you know for the next generation and uh, and not have to worry about some kind of a maintenance schedule with it yeah. can you tell me maybe the differences between or or why folks might choose one over the other oh yeah so pressure treated is your most economical way of putting a deck on to anything right everyone knows that <laughs> shorter the prices lately exactly so that's <laughs> this year is totally out of normal right for right. what lumber prices have done uh but you're still your cheapest or most economical offer is pressure treated wood. Okay. So that gets you going. I'll probably last give or take 15 years, depending on what, how much sunlight and moisture and all that it okay. takes in, right? So it will. You'll have slivers. It's a wood product, right? It's spruce right. or pine that's been treated. So there's wait, chemicals wait, you in saw it. Saw that one. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Right. <laughs> big slivers. Wood is wood. It will. Yeah, it needs maintenance or it will decay over 15 years. That's as best you're probably going to get out of a decking like that, and then you're going to have to replace it. So. Right. Then the next option is Western Red Cedar is what we offer. Okay. So it's a nice clean wood, no chemicals, okay. beautiful smell, beautiful look. Yeah. Goes gray quick though, right? So yeah. you get you lose that nice beautiful look quite quickly unless you stain it or seal it. But that's a lot of work, especially yeah. on dock. You almost have to do it every year because of the the amount of sun it gets, the amount of use it gets. Right. It there's not a product out there that's going to keep it from more than two years that you're going to have to redo. Yeah. So that's a lot of work every year, to, especially the square footage of dock you're getting, right? So, right. Yeah. Yeah. The, if I if anyone has the money or if I was going to recommend it, I would recommend PVC every time. Really. It has a 25-year warranty. There is no slivers. There's no maintenance. It holds its color. 
it's you can pick your color too right right so you can yeah. pick what color you like whatever it's beautiful yeah I just, no that's great yeah. plus uh one thing i was i appreciated i wasn't sure if it was going to be slippery but it actually has a, a textured surface it's not yeah. a slippery surface no a nice grain look to it right yeah. so it still kind of gives you that wood look i guess yeah. uh but it's the pvc product which is yeah I've, we've never had a complaint about it uh right. it's yeah everything's made the same right so there's no yeah. changes or any uh any up. issues at exactly. all well i i think i was maybe fortunate with the rise in prices because you know pressure treat you know originally when i started looking a few years ago it was more towards a wood dock yeah i didn't know much about docks i've learned a lot in the last you yeah. know couple of years um from things that i've read online the different companies i've i've worked with and talked to including you folks and i think what worked to my benefit this year is that the cost of wood has shot up so dramatically. The cost of PVC didn't go up, uh, it went up a little, but it brought the prices so much closer yes, that I, sure. I had to get the PVC. Yeah, no, and, I agree. Uh, like anyone who's buying a wood dock this year should really look at aluminum d just because of what the market's done, right? There, yeah. That percentage of variance is very small now. So to get right. a dock that's gonna last you over 40 years to a dock that'll last you 15 to 20 years, Yeah it's for the big picture it's you gotta go aluminum yeah. you have to yeah it's just the maintenance that i know it would last like this is for your kids right as you said yeah. they won't have to do any maintenance for a long long time for this dock like yeah no you that's have great foam filled floats with a 10-year warranty you have aluminum frame with a 15-year warranty you have a pvc decking with 25-year warranty like yeah. there's no maintenance no it's well, perfect yeah you're talking my language yeah exactly <laughs> a lot of people's <laughs> ben Let's talk families. Trying to decide what type, design, or size of dock you're gonna need for your cottage. Yeah. Uh, I went through a number of different reiterations and, and of course when you sent Bob up here, that he's just a wealth of knowledge. Yeah. Went through a lot of different uh, discussions, questions about the family, how many members, what type of watercraft they have, those kind of things. And I was trying to make sure that this time when we spent the money on a good quality dock, I wanted to make sure it was it was big enough that the family can sit around on that dock and not have to squeeze by each other along the edge without falling in. Exactly. So maybe could you spend a few minutes or talk about what that process is with somebody that is looking for a dock and how you folks help them or get them or figure out just what they need. Yeah, for sure. So you being here and having a dock, you knew what would work and what wouldn't, right? Which is a nice step. You're already halfway there because right. you have a cottage, you've owned it, you've had a dock, you know what this worked or that didn't right yeah. so you came in with some good options or ideas already which is great because some customers they've just bought a cottage right they're going to buy a boat or a sea do or something but they have no idea right yeah so you have to kind of walk through it's all depending on what kind of watercrafts you're trying to park how deep your water is um how many family members you're trying to do is it is that an entertainment center or is that a yeah. place where you're just trying to get on your boat and get out of here? Gotcha. Uh, depending on your landscape too, right? Some people have no flat land to sit. So oh, that dock right. becomes a deck, it becomes the entertainment center, it becomes everything. Got it. Because yeah, it's a it's, great point. Yeah, so it all depends on your landscape, what you want to do with it. Um, Everyone does gravitate to the water. So you, <laughs> well, do, you sure do up here. I've never ever heard once that someone had too big of a dock. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, you always want to yeah. go, if you're going say, uh, well, I'm thinking eight feet, but maybe 10, you're going to be happier with 10. It's, yeah. you, you need that extra room because everyone gravitates. On a nice day, yeah. everyone wants to be on the dock. They want to be at the end of the dock where the sun is, where the action is, right? Right. So yeah, it's, you can never go too big in our, my opinion. There's always, everyone's going to gravitate to that. You have yeah. guests up, you have your whole family up, right? Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, and you, you need, need the, the space. You and need it's, the uh, it's, you know, you don't have to have it. I mean, a dock in all essence is a luxury, but when you've put so much time and effort into building a family cottage yeah. and everybody spends most of their time every day out on the water or by the water, you'd like to be able to have that ability to, to get everybody to sit together. Comfortably, right? Yeah. So, yes. And uh, I was really pleased. We went through a number of different um, workings with Bob to figure out what that design would look like to give me a little extra width. Yeah. And I mean, in all fairness, you know, I'd love to have a bigger dock that has, you know, bays for the boat and yeah. a bay for the sea dew and all, yeah. but I, I think what we came up with, I'm pretty happy with. Yeah. And it looks great coming across the lake, getting yeah. pulled by that nine horse. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah, for sure. The tugboat. <laughs> yeah, indeed. But a, a couple other things. You are Ontario based. 
yeah. Canadian company. Yes. Uh, and are your supplies and things? Uh... So yeah, most are, everything is North American. Uh, supplies, a lot of it is local Ontario. Great, uh, okay. Like floats, aluminum um, is all Ontario. Uh, the decking is North American, depending on, uh, cedar is Western, uh, Western Canada, obviously. Yes. The PVC comes from the States, and then pressure treated is a local pressure treated okay. plant that does that. Uh, but yeah, we're trying to keep everything as local as possible, keep everyone employed and yeah, no, locally, it's right? Yeah. yeah. So yeah, no, we we pride ourselves on locally made. No, That's, excellent. Yeah. And speaking of that, um, you know, as I was telling, I was telling the folks on the the uh, the video, over the last few years, I've gone as far as two and a half hours away from here uh, to meet with different companies. Yeah. Because they're not. I mean, although there are a lot of dock builders in the province, they're obviously very disparate or, or spread out. Yeah. Um, for you, you folks are down in the Kawartha's Peterborough area, roughly. Yeah. How far is your service area, or how far out will you go uh, to service a customer? Wherever we need. <laughs> oh, really? Okay, that's Yeah, great. we will go. We've been five hours away from our location uh, before. Okay. Uh, we have done a few jobs in Manitoba also. So. Oh, wow. Yeah, okay. so, uh, yeah, if the customer is willing to pay, we can travel that distance, right? But 85% uh, of our uh, work would be probably... A two and a half hour radius from us so okay you think of how many lakes are just oh, radius of well, peter you're, right you're right it's in wild. the of it yeah, yeah. It's and the wild. bills I, I met with a couple of contractors over the last little while because i've i needed i'd like to build a garage and and yes. this was one of the reasons that's been holding me because i knew i needed this first right and they're they're a year and a half out yes for a start date to yeah. build a garage yeah a all trades that i know are booked so two to three years out right now for the, yeah. the boom of real estate it's just wild yeah, yeah how busy they indeed. are so there's lots of work out there for everyone no that's great yeah. so i appreciate you spending the time and I, I know your guys are hard at work i'm yeah. dying to see the finished product yeah so at the end of the day it's an engineered build yes it's welded welded instruction ontario made uh we weld it right on site just outside of peterborough so, great yeah we employ and pvc decking pvc decking that's, that's no maintenance <laughs> well thank you so much for your time i thank really you, appreciate Gord. you spending it with us yeah let's get back out let's see how the guys are doing Thanks again, Ben. Perfect. Thank you. Now this is a dock. Let me share the build with you. We're 28 feet from shore to the edge of the dock, and I added a 10 by 10 extension here on the left side to provide me a little extra room for the family to gather together. The initial walkout is eight feet wide, and it's hinged to the main dock. And talking about quality, it includes this steel lip to cover the gap between the hinged docks I purchased bumper guard on both sides and right across the front, as well as two corner bumpers because <laughs> I still need them. A set of cleats on each side for each of my watercraft and a good quality ladder, can't forget that. The dock is held in place with six big slabs of cement cross chained underneath the main body of the dock and they're pinned at the shore. One really nice thing about this design and this choice, I don't have to pull this dock out in the winter. I just have to adjust the chains. And unlike many other designs I looked at, the chains are attached right on the edge of the dock so I don't have to jump in the water and get under the dock or reach under it to try to get those chains adjusted. They're right here and they're shackled. And with a welded aluminum frame, PVC decking and a long warranty, I'm pretty sure it's gonna last well beyond my own years. And just as importantly, it's definitely gonna add value to that investment you see behind me. And of course, I needed to take a moment just to thank Ben and his team at Interco, not only for an excellent on-time professional installation, but also for allowing me to videotape it. I tried my best not to get in your way, and I hope I kept my promise. I hope you found today's video helpful or informative. If you like the channel, please click subscribe, hit that like button, and if you want to know when I'm posting more videos, just click that little bell. Looks like I've got some work to do. And I'm pretty sure Carol's already out looking at deck furniture. Thanks so much for hanging around today. Have a wonderful week with your families. Please be kind to each other. And I'll see you again on the next one. Right here on GP Outdoors. Cheers.